good intro. That's a great intro. This, mm. this bit. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> yeah, let's go Three, again. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Andrew. <laughs> Dude, this side. That like, I'm not that need. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemy. We're here with Matt Burning of The National and director Mike Mills. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. Hi. And we're here to celebrate the launch of I Am Easy To Find, a collaborative album slash movie. What came first? The email. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Mike emailed. We were on, we were, actually we had just, Sleep Ill Beast had just come out, right? Or yeah, yeah. It, it was, was like, coming out and I saw all the stuff and I was like, <gasps> Yeah, so I As think literally fan. we were like we were just starting the tour for Sleep Well Beast and and uh, and Mike said, "Do you want to make another record?" And you know, <laughs> he was like, "Mike, Mike said said uh, if asked if we wanted to do something and um, anything." And I think you were thinking of, of a video. an album or yeah, sorry, a video yeah. for, for for something off of that record, yeah. maybe. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, totally. But all of those videos were already done, and they all had this like aesthetic that they were all, it was all kind of locked in, and that was all so. I was like, oh shit! I mean, we missed a, a chance to work with Mike Mills, uh, but but we had all this music, and I was like, well, I said I just sent him back a bunch of like about ten, twelve things that were so songs, songs that we loved that we just hadn't fit, hadn't fit on any record yet, and and he sort of right away, um, and I said, you know, do you want to do anything with these because we don't need a video, and, mm -hmm. and I said and maybe more than a video, and and um, and I sent you all that, and then you kind of like. T took the bait. I took the bait. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it was totally, the beautiful part of it was all the unknowns. It was mm. like, what is it going to be? I have no idea. How long is it going to be? I have no idea. How many songs? We don't know. And we don't really care. We're not putting any conditions on it. So it was like super crazy invitation. Um, the only condition was that he had to do all the hard, that all the, all the, <laughs> all the hard thinking. <laughs> so, uh, and luckily I had an idea. I remember you, we were on the first phone call and uh, you kind of gave me this huge invitation. I was like, well, I hope I can come up with something. <laughs> and you were sort of like, what? And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't always come up with <laughs> yeah, you're like, ideas. I don't always come up with ideas. So I was like, it's not always good. Uh -oh. <laughs> but uh, uh, I listen to the National all the time. I listen to them a lot when I'm writing, like on repeat, either like one song or a whole record. And for the sort of, before I knew Matt and the band, the sort of camaraderie and for Matt's trust in personal material, personal things is observed. That's how I try to make movies. So it's very natural, you know, and I feel like they've been a, an unconscious score to my films anyways. Um, and um, I recently met Alicia Vikander. Mm. Um, Is that how you say it? I've been calling her Vikander. I've never uh, met her, but I've been uh, saying it's it. It's Alicia Vikander. Oh, there's a, it's it's a Scandi, kind of. When, she says, it, when she says it, it sounds like a bird singing. <laughs> I'm never going to say it right, so I'm doing my best. Yeah. <laughs> but these songs, some of them were fully formed. Some of them were just um, had sketches of lyrics, some of them had no lyrics, so it was like a really amorphous thing. Mm. So I had to just kind of refer to kind of what I interpreted as national themes, or like Matt or Matt and Corinne themes. And this, luckily this idea came of like how to do a whole life mm. very quickly. And when you do a life really quickly, it creates um, kind of drama, or creates like um, scary radical choices of what you're going to show and not show. Mm. Because Matt, the last time we spoke, you said that you were keen to kind of you, you used the phrase "turn the binoculars backwards," because you said you Did were kind I of. Did I say that? Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good phrase. Doesn't that make you look really <laughs> tiny. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you said you were, you said you were tired yeah. of looking inwards and writing about yourself. So were you kind uh, of looking uh, for a narrative to drive you this time. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think, or at least just just I was. I'm always writing about myself. I can't, you know, as you're always writing about. Um, just the 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 the, the, the emotional uh, draw of any of any song is is coming from your own real emotional needs or your real emotional fears and 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 so but but so that's I always feel like I'm writing about myself even when I'm when it's it's being put into uh, like channeled through a character or even and my wife is writing lyrics too and I think I can tell they're about she's writing. We do both do the same thing, you know. We I can tell that that she's kind of writing for me through my voice, but it's also her trying to explain something to me about how I am, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's kind of the way Mike's films are too. And 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 so when Mike wrote, I was um, 
everyone in the band were, were big fans of his, but but particularly I think um, I've always thought Mike's f movies were they were always really effective and important to me because that he was doing something. I think I learned a lot for, from him. His, his films always show so much empathy for for every character. Like the, even the, the small bit roles. There's a, there's always there's something real there. There's some mm. a, a genuine human that comes into the m f film and you care about him and you get a get a, a, a an idea of, of a complex character even the smallest roles. And so I just felt like Mike would understand or just help us do do what we like that he would understand the water we're swimming in it didn't matter he's never made a record that's why i was like just you you make films it's full of sound it's more more sound than imagery sometimes that you're layering into films i was like just it's just like this will just be easier you know there's it's, it's you can you can produce the record and <laughs> i mean i mean but it was, and a, it was were, a process you right in and you got yeah i loved it and but also with the with the album with the movie they gave me these songs and then i asked for the stems and they said okay which is quite a leap of faith and because we didn't really have much we didn't know each other well then and uh, so for the film I got to play with the songs and really kind of move things around or just feature a couple of tracks that they had from a much fuller song and luckily the band sort of like responded to it or they were sort of open we to it. We were actually a little surprised on. that you, I mean, we, we, we gave you stems because we thought you would just maybe like, yeah. like, like, like work on levels, but what he did, he's like, he just took vocals, yanked them out, put them on, he just pulled, the, he, he just dismantled all the songs. He pulled, pulled together, pulled apart all the puzzle pieces that we had stacked together that, that created the uh, impression of a song. <laughs> and and he, he started using them using those pieces in totally different ways through the film and and um, like the first thing you hear in the film is like a little piece of one song it's like the bridge from yeah. a song it's yeah a, and it's just the strings and you singing yeah. yeah and and all of a sudden like you sh when you showed us something it was like it was like well, that's that piece from that song and it starts the, and it, like it was so he just highlighted little things and and re re rebooted the whole kind of like armature of what this thing could be and and um yeah, we, we we thought these songs were, were a certain thing, and he he pulled them apart and showed us, uh, oh, they could be this too, or this, or this, or this, and um, and that really was that was really fun and, and liberating for us to see somebody else um, play with our play with all the pieces, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and show us what else we can he can, we can make out of our own pieces, you know. Yeah, and Mike, you mentioned um, reoccurring national themes there. I mean, um, Matt previously called them to us. Uh, the three reoccurring themes were sex, death, and losing. Mm. What? Losing? Losing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I remember saying that. To me, <laughs> what, what, what kind of... Um, it's, to me, it's like a lot of... Um, there's a lot of questioning of like, you know, how did I get here? Who, who am I? Yeah. Like, how did this all happen? And who am I in relationship to you? And like, and are we connected? Or how, how, how come we aren't connected in a way that, that I want to be? Um, and that is so, that can relate to so many different relationships. It's such a kind of primal feeling. So it works so well transposed onto the song. Some of these lyrics were written, you know, before we met, before it came up with the film idea. And you can put them on different images of Alicia's life, of that mm. character's life. And they, and they really feel like they were, oh, that was custom written for her leaving home, her uh, first feelings of alienation as a child, right? Um, so I was writing to that, that general, general, Themes of alienation, I think, are the ones that I gravitate towards. Yeah, and then seeing the film with Alicia and all those things, I think I started really empathizing with not just the the the, the character in the film, the person in the film, but all the other characters. And my wife started really started. We started thinking. I started really th like feel like I was writing from the husband and the father. And then I have a ten year old daughter. And then I was just I, I just started feel, writing from from. From from that perspective, or a little bit, or just like uh, trying to empathize with all those, those, and so was my wife, and 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 um, and a bunch of new songs bloomed, um, um, just like just after we saw a a rough cut of, of the thing yeah. that was about ninety percent done, and then all of a sudden all kinds of new songs just 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 came out of nowhere, inspired by the film, and we were pulling. Pulling fragments and pieces of the the script and the the, the under the, the the subtitling and everything into it, uh, even the stories, you know, I think um, that the lot a lot of the fabric of his film then fed the, yeah. the, the last up, third of the record. Yeah. Ended up being in songs that aren't in the film, but are just they're on the record, but they're kind of referring back to things we explored in the film. Yeah, like the 
Bryce had the Brooklyn Youth Choir do some of the subtitles, like Matt was saying, and um, um, and they yeah, they kept stealing from each other. And then you started singing things like you you were referring to R E M. The flowers cover everything. And then I heard that one we were recording. I put it back into the film. There's a shot oh, yeah. of flowers, and there's a real fun symbiotic back and forth. Partly because at least on the film side, it took a while. Like we played with it and we collaborated back and forth for over a year. So we kind of do one little adjustment, mm -hmm. send it to you. You would do a different lyric. Mm -hmm. We would put it in the film, send mm -hmm. it back to everyone. You would respond, oh, and, and change mm -hmm. the lyric a little bit. And he's on tour. So we would get these really neat recordings from like a bathroom in Barcelona, you know, like a bathroom in another city. Which is a great name for an album. <laughs> and then a different bathroom see, in our, Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so our edit had an amazing sort of like travel log of where Matt was at different times. Different bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an atlas the of bathrooms. were good in the hotel bathroom. Uh, so, and I was really lucky to get to have that messy, long, um, not caring about the result and not being super pressured about what's coming from this or where's mm. it going or how's it all going to work out. Because I was going to ask, having not seen the film yet, I was going to ask if it was a challenge to kind of map your thoughts or messages onto the life of a young woman growing up. But it's not about that. It's more ambiguous. It's about pulling the tapestry of like influences on someone's life. Somebody asked, just me recently, is, is, is if, excuse me, maybe the way I was talking, they like, do, do, I, did I, do I see the character in the film as genderless? And, uh, and I said, no, I don't, I don't at all see, her, see the, the character, the woman there is genderless. But, um, but yeah, but it's not, I don't necessarily feel like that, 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 that gender thing is, is, is at all the point, you know, or, yeah. or really what it's, 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 a lot of people ask us, was this, was this sort of an attempt to, to do a record that has more of a feminine perspective or something like that? And, I would say not an attempt, and it probably has that, mm. but it wasn't. That wasn't what we were necessarily trying to do. I think it was just like the idea of what a what a person is really. And then, uh, but but yeah, this 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 you decided you wanted it, you know, Alicia to embody this. But like I was very much empathizing with that character when I was writing a lot, and maybe just because I just empathize with my daughter and so much, and, and I, I, I don't feel that separated, you know, mm -hmm. from her fears and needs, and I, and I, I understand all her anxieties, because I, I feel like I gave them to her, you know? Mm -hmm. As I go, pass them <laughs> on, I'm like, I, I know, mm -hmm. that's that's your inheritance. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, you <laughs> yeah. know? Um, so, yeah. yeah. I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> so what can you tell us about the female voices that you brought onto the record? It was interesting, like, when we started thinking about it, I was like, oh, should it be someone very well known, very famous, or and it kind of wound down to the, all these people that they've worked with for many years mm. and have a relationship with, and it was like a very organic thing, and even started out as kind of an experiment. We're like, should we try to have female singers do Matt's lyrics, and what would that mean if we put it on the picture? So it was like Pauline and uh, Lisa Hannigan. Lisa Hannigan and, and Diane. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, and, I don't know if and then Kate, Kate in... came. I think Kate came in pretty early, and then yeah, Kate did it on her own. Yeah, but they're all people that Aaron has produced, right? Or yep, Evo, with? and he's he's worked with and is producing a record, and then and then um, Gail Ann Dorsey lives near Aaron, and they met at a political function, and then the rest of us met her at another at a Planned Parenthood function a few months later, and and um, she sang with us, and 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 right away was it. I th right away, I was like, Let, "Let's well, maybe she'll she'll sing on this record." And she, and then you were in there. I was in there when she came in, and it was like, "Whoa!" It's like, <laughs> and her voice and Matt's voice together. There's something about the timbre or whatever. It's like, um, you know, super magic. Uh, the last time we spoke, Matt, you also said that there was kind of a wealth of kind of rockier material in the back. Have you have you been working quite a dual way? Is we gave like that to a uh, Mike too, but he <laughs> he uh, chose the uh, the the, the uh, other stuff, the less. Um, um, yeah, there's a there is we've been we write lots of stuff. We're always like writing different and there was we were supposed to we were gonna take like a year off, and then we were gonna like go back after a long break and and just kind of be a, a, a just go in and try to make a record in like a, two weeks like a like a rock record live, and and, and those kind of songs and um, but but this this started bubbling instead and it was uh, and we couldn't not chase this 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 thing you know and, and um so so yeah and then the aesthetic of this record it wasn't we were still still digging into i mean musically aaron and bryce and brian and scott everybody's like kind of digging further into the, their different you know things that they're into and i think 
they, no, they, they hadn't really run out of, 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 of uh, sort of the hunt for like these, these more electric, you know, electronic things and just weird textures and less, less live. So it was, it was, we weren't done with that. It was, it kind of felt good to even go further. I, I think aesthetically it is like a, a sleep well beast. It is, it goes further in that direction in some ways and then a bunch of other directions. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's a whole other thing that maybe we'll, we'll get out of the freezer and turn but this, it there's a, To me, it's really heterogeneous. There's like Rylands on there. Yeah. And like Kansas yeah, right. and Light Years are very kind of like your guys' older DNA, uh -huh. but it has like a slightly different cast on it. And then there's songs that feel pretty different, and there's the choir. I don't know. Yeah. I think but it was then neat. Light Years feels like, well, that could have been on, 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 on maybe any of our records a mm -hmm. little bit. It feels no, like, like it's. But it has like a different, yeah. I don't know, has a slightly different yeah. vibe to it. We weren't worried about what it was going to turn into. We yeah. were just, we were just. We all we knew was we were having the the process was really inspiring and everything. Uh, um, it wasn't always it wasn't conflict free, but it was incredibly rewarding and and, and really respectful. And Mike kind of taught us how to just. He works with artists, sensitive artists, so much. I think he that was the other reason why he was a good producer. He he jumped into a to a room of very uh, a bunch of really sensitive artists, and he knew how to how to how to handle us, you know, a little bit. And it was nice. It was nice to be to be treated so so uh, kindly, you know, but also pushed, pushed out on limbs kindly, you know. And then, <laughs> and, and then you hear the saw. And then, no, no. The Buster Keaton yeah. scene, yeah. Well, congratulations on a great project, guys. Thank you so Thanks, much for your time. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah.